Uh, yeah, it's very interesting. Nobody ever sat down and said, are we going to put a bunch of uh, what would be considered almost sacred edge kind of pieces in a commercial uh, lobby. Um, but it, when you when you do take the three pieces and uh, the, the, the Shard's Labyrinth by Roger Leitner, you have the painting Ascension and then uh, Chandelier Chardon, which is it, sort of this really interesting mix of things that inspired us but at no time felt religious to us or, or um, uh, but just felt right and important and strong. And, uh, and something that everybody could, you could walk through that space and never pick up any religious or spiritual overtones, but you might feel them. The whole atrium is based on phi, which is sacred geometry. And phi is a ratio, um, three, five, eight, and all, everything from nature in its perfection has that same equivalent of the Fibonacci series. Throughout history, whenever sacred geometry is used, people have used it to e evoke certain emotions. The hope probably was that you would feel holy or humbled. Um, certainly, you'd recognize the beauty. No, I just uh, tell people that um, go over and see it. See what you think. I mean, it's a pretty outrageous lobby, and um, nighttime is totally different than the day. The Grace Cathedral in San Francisco has uh, the other labyrinth of Chart, and being a religious house, they uh, talk about the emotional experience and the heart-throbbing feeling that you get, and how how your breathing's different when you walk it. This is kind of the the grandmother or the mother of all, all the labyrinths, so we just recreated it. The thing about it, just take off your shoes and relax and just walk it at your own pace and just, you know, let your, let your head do what it's going to do and think. Get to the center, maybe think about the trip in and is the trip out going to be the same thing? Just the title of that painting, Ascension, with the color, it adds that color that was so necessary. All of that high temperature, that, that, that flowing of like molten colors, those reds and, and burnt siennas and all those tones in that painting are capturing like a moment of euphoria, a moment of ecstasy, aha, eureka, whatever you want to call that moment that every human being has experienced. I wanted to break down the distinction between the observer and the observed, that you were part, you were looking at a part of your own mind, that your imagination was completing the work. And that's why I build these very large paintings that have that neural-like texture with imagery on them to suggest that what you see in your mind's eye is enveloping you. It's part of you, it's exterior to you, it's not just internal here. So I wanted to blur all those different distinctions. When that chandelier is hanging above the labyrinth, right in the center, a vibration occurs just through the energe energetic resonance between those two pieces. This was inspired by a, by a man that I had done some illustration about, Teilhard de Chardin, who was a Jesuit priest and paleontologist, and his work was the idea that geological, biological, and spiritual evolution could coexist. And that you went from geology to biology to newness, um, or the, the or spirit. And so the chandelier is built that way. It starts geometrically and becomes bionic and then hopefully become a spiritual by the time you get to the end, which ends in the, in the center of the labyrinth. As a maximalist, I always design at least a couple of layers that I don't believe are visible to the naked eye, or uh, there's a lot in that chandelier that would take a pair of very strong binoculars um, to uh, see. But that's the point. 
Because if it's not bigger than one viewing, that doesn't do anything for me. Because that doesn't leave any room for mystery, and it doesn't leave any room for um, seeing something different. Um, and um, so, yeah, I hope it. Uh, yeah, there, there are a lot of things contained in there, in its geometry and in, in its progression. Uh, it's all complicated enough that I hope that you know. People could look at it in many different ways, especially if you're like working in that place and you walk, you walk by it every day. Exactly. We've been there a couple times at night. It's just breathtaking. You'll have to come and see it at night.